What's going on Goon Squad? Today we're opening up the Zashian V League Battle Deck with the Arceus Dalga and Palkia Tag Team GX. Now if you haven't seen this yet, this is like the most overpowered product if you're interested in getting into battles. Let's say you just started picking up a Pokemon card game as a collector, but you want to learn how to battle. This is probably what you're going to want to pick up. You can see the deck list here. Uh, we have another video discussing the deck list. Very good cards in here. You got two Zashian Vs, one ADP GX, four Jirachi, um, a lot of essential trainer cards. To make just about any deck you could think of. It's a very good, a lot of good value in this deck. So yeah, we're going to open it up and go through it here. Not really going to be like a normal unboxing because we already know the cards we're going to get, but it'll be nice to talk about. So here we got a little rule book. So if you don't know how to play the game, you can read this and it kind of goes over the basics. If you don't know how to play the Pokemon trading card game, I definitely recommend learning. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I've been playing for like a very long time and uh, I like it more than any other card game. So. We got some Poison and Burn counters with a GX marker. Some very nice colored dice, blue and red. Just like Zashian, I guess. Uh, here's a code card. If you want to use this deck out in an online game, there you go. So now we have the big boy, kind of a controversial card, the ADP GX. Uh, a lot of people are calling for this to get banned for maybe good reason. Um, it's capable of doing 150 damage and then accelerating three basic energy from your deck and attaching them to any other Pokemon you have in play or on your bench. Now it's GX attack. All you need is like one metal and one water energy. And for the rest of the game, you're doing 30 extra damage and taking an extra prize card for every knockout. And its only weakness is Fairy, which stopped being printed as a sword and shield, so there's not a lot of counters for this card. But ADP on its own would be nothing if it wasn't for these two doggo boys. Zash and V, very powerful card, coming in with 220 HP. Uh, Interpret Sword lets you look at the top three cards of your deck. If you find any metal energy in those three cards, you can just attach them right away to the Zashian. It's a very good way to get energy attached in the first couple turns. Uh, when you use this ability, your turn will end. So it's not something you want to do every single turn, obviously. If your turn ends, you can't attack. But, you know, maybe like the first turn when you're not allowed to attack, or if you're still kind of setting up uh, energy under your Arceus Dalgapalkia. It's a good way to get Zashian set up. And then for 230 damage, you need 3 metal energy. That's a pretty hefty attack. I mean, that's capable of knocking out a lot of things in one shot. Of course, you can't use Brave Blade two turns in a row. But if you have two of them, you can kind of switch which one's active. And you can get around that limitation of only being able to attack every other turn by just switching out. 
let's say this one's active and you switch out if you switch back in he can attack again that cooldown kind of goes away once he hits the bench so you could pull out another one or you could just pull him back out if you had switches or air balloon or something like that so this is kind of like the main core of the deck right here just these three cards what you want to do is probably start out with the ADP you want to get your two energies attached for its GX move and then if you can the next turn just throw down one more energy and you could instantly get a Zashian V on the bench set up you can use ultimate ray look for three energy cards from your deck and then just attach them to Zashian V on the bench and then next turn he's ready to go next turn he's doing you know 260 damage because of the plus 30 damage with the ADP's GX attack. This is a very strong deck. It's one of the best decks in the format. I mean, not exactly, but this is a great start for that kind of build. Just these cards alone, like, they'll carry you through so many wins. And now we got all this other stuff in the deck. take a look so we have Malo and Lana pretty good supporter card this is like one of the only healing options you're gonna have you can switch your active with one of your bench Pokemon which I mean by its own it's like whatever I could do that with a switch I could pay retreat costs that's not really that good for a supporter but if you discard two other cards from your hand you're also healing 120 damage from the Pokemon you switched out so it's a pretty good way to Let's say this is what your field looks like. ADP's taking a little bit of damage. You could play the Malo and Lana and then switch out. ADP heals 120 and your opponent's not going to take a prize card. So it's pretty good. Uh, another supporter we have here is Guzma and Hala. Now you're really going to only use this to look for your Aurora energy. Since the ADP needs a metal and a water energy to be able to use its GX attack, it's kind of hard to get off that water energy. There's really not a good way to search out basic energies. So you can use the Aura energy to kind of meet that requirement. It counts as a rainbow. So it could be any type of energy. All you have to do is discard a card from your hand when you attach it. But then all you need is like a metal energy onto the ADP that you could GX right away. You can also get a stadium and a Pokemon tool with this, but I think its main utility is looking for that Aurora energy. Uh, quick ball, pretty standard in every deck. Discard a card from your hand, search for a basic Pokemon. Since your core Pokemon here are basics, it's pretty useful. You don't really run too much evolution stuff in this deck. Professor's Research, again, very standard just for consistency, draw power. Um, I know discarding your hand sounds pretty rough, but if you only have like two or three cards in your hand, it's not that punishing. And I mean, you're running multiples of like every card in your deck, so odds are you're going to hit another one again. And just drawing seven cards is so useful just to keep things rolling, keep the momentum on your side. Another quick ball. I think this runs four of them. I'll get the deck list out here so I can read that while I talk. Yeah, there's four quick balls. Again, just kind of for consistency, making sure you're able to get your Pokemon in play when you need them. Very useful. Just about in every deck. I mean, you could buy this Zashian V deck, and even if you're not interested in using ADP and Zashian, it's got tons of other core cards for any other deck. So I believe this deck list only runs two water energies. 
Like I said, kind of hard to pull off that GX move with only two water energies in the deck. But that's when you want to, you know, Guzman Hala, search for uh, basic en or Aurora energy. Metal Saucer, pretty nice. Let's you attach a metal energy from your discard pile to one of your benched metal type Pokemon. So maybe your opponent knocked out one of your Zashins. All the energy attached to him get put in the discard pile. But now you can just Metal Saucer, get another Zashin V on your bench set up, and you can keep things rolling. Pretty useful to have some kind of energy retrieval from your discard pile, so Metal Saucers are good. Now, this Jirachi is a very good card in almost every deck. I honestly think it's kind of overkill in a Zashin V deck, because you could already interpret Sword. And that's kind of like your draw engine until you get things rolling. But you could take these Jirachi V and put them in plenty of other decks. Um, you're never going to be attacking with it. You're just going to use it for its ability, Stellar Wish. Once during your turn, if this is your active Pokemon, you can look at the top five cards of your deck, pick a trainer card from those five cards, put it in your hand, and shuffle the other cards back into your deck. And then, of course, Jirachi is asleep afterwards, but you could just switch him out. And kind of like the Rave Blade cooldown thing, if you switch Jirachi into your bench and pull him back out, you can use that ability again. Uh, another consistency card here, this is Marnie. Kind of works like a reset stamp and some draw support all in one card. Each player shuffles their hand and puts it on the bottom of their deck. If either player put any cards on the bottom of their deck, you draw five cards and your opponent draws four. So like, if both players don't have anything in their hand, I guess it does nothing, but <laughs> basically you're just getting a fresh hand. Your opponent only gets four cards, you get five. All your cards are going on the bottom of your deck, which means you're not going to draw those again. It's kind of important to note. Again, Marnie is using like every single deck, so it's a very useful card for any deck you might want to build. Uh, same thing here with Boss's Orders, very critical card for deck building. This just forces a switch on your opponent. You get to pick one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and bring him out into the active position. So it's pretty useful for picking off easy targets, maybe guaranteeing a win. I mean, this is a mean card. Won me a lot of games, also lost me a lot of games. Just by being able to force a Pokemon into the active position and guarantee a knockout. Or even maybe move around some threats, you know. You could deny a knockout if you switch out your opponent's attacker. Maybe they don't have a switch option. You could buy yourself a turn. Boss's Orders is very useful. There's two in this deck. Most decks run three or four, but two is a good start. This is a very valuable card for uh, deck building. Metal Energy. Kind of your main tool for attacks, obviously. Your Zashian uses Metal Energy, your ADP uses Metal Energy. There are eight Metal Energy in the stack. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Galarian Zigzagoon. Uh, there's only one in this deck. I don't know if it's really necessary, but again, it's kind of a good card just to throw in any deck. When you play him from your hand onto your bench, you put one damage in any of your opponent's Pokemon. So, I mean, that could help you. Maybe you're 10 damage away from getting a knockout. Maybe you just want to do some extra damage. You could play Zigzagoon and just kind of do 10 damage. And going along with that, if I scoop up net, this lets you put one of your... can't pick it up. This lets you put one of your Pokemon that isn't a V or a GX back into your hand. So, you're really going to be using that on these two cards, Zigzagoon and Jirachi. 
let's say, you know, they're active, they're asleep. You can't pay retreat cost if you're asleep. You could still air balloon or use a switch or even use a scoop up net. Bring that back into your hand. And now if you played him from your hand back down and got him back into the active, you could use that ability again. Same with Zigzagoon. Scoop up net when he's on your bench. You could do another 10 damage with its ability. You're playing it from your hand onto your bench again. So you can kind of use this to do multiple damage with Zigzagoon. Or just get Jirachi out so someone else can come in. Scoop up nets are nice. Of course you can't pick up V's or GX's. So you're not able to scoop up the Zashian or ADP. But there's a lot of other utilities for a scoop up net. Now we have Switch. Another staple card and plenty of decks. This just, you know, lets you switch out Pokemon. Nothing more to it. Again, you know, if you have... You're going to want a lot of switch options in this ADP Zashian deck because of that Brave Blade cooldown. Can't use that attack two turns in a row. So if I switch him out, now this one can attack. Next turn, switch him out. This one can attack. And yeah, like I said, let's say switch him into the bench, pull him out. If he doesn't have enough energy, you could play switch, get that one active, and now he can attack again. Energy switch, okay. Now this is like one of the more cool utilities in this deck, I suppose. Because what it allows you to do is get like a turn 2 Altered Creation GX. Kind of tough to pull off. Well, let's say turn 1, your Zashian uses Interpret Sword, where you look at the top 3 cards of your deck, put a Metal Energy onto the Zashian, and then your turn ends. So let's just say your turn 1 ended with a Metal Energy on Zashian. And let's say you manually attach a water energy. Now you can use energy switch, which lets you move a basic energy from one of your Pokemon to another Pokemon. And I could just move this energy onto the ADP, and now he can use his GX attack. It's got one water, one metal, that's all you need to use that GX attack. And for the rest of the game, you're just doing extra damage and taking extra prize cards. It's pretty useful. And another Jirachi. We got four Jirachis in here. We got four Marnies in here. Plenty of Metal Energy. Now Oranguru is another interesting one. You're never going to attack with him, he's just going to sit on your bench, and once during your turn, you may switch a card from your hand with the top card of your deck. So there's a couple things you could do with this. One thing is it just gives you more draw power, I mean, you could take a card from your hand, put it on the top of your deck, or switch it with the top of your deck, and you can, you're looking at an extra card every turn, which is fine, you know, but... The really interesting thing you're going to want to do with this card is let's say you have a metal energy in your hand and you already attached a metal energy or any other kind of energy that turn. So let's say let's say like this is my hand, right? And this is what my field looks like. I already attached a metal energy onto Zashi in this turn. I still have another metal energy that I want to attach, but you can only attach one energy per turn, so it's kind of just sitting around until next turn. Well, I can use Oranguru to switch this with the top card of my deck. And now when I use Interpret Sword, I'm taking the top three cards of my deck. Like, oh look, that metal energy I put in there is in those top three cards. So now I can just attach that right away. And you're kind of getting two energy attachments per, per turn just by kind of manipulating the top of your deck and what your cards can do. So Oranger is pretty useful. And yeah, he's just going to help you get more draw power, but you're only really looking at one extra card. 
And then the next turn, unless you shuffle your deck, you're just going to redraw the old card you picked up. Uh, energy Spinner. Not too useful, but it's not bad. There's only one in this deck. All it really lets you do is search your deck for a basic energy, put it in your hand. But if it's the first turn and you're going second, you could search for three basic energies instead of one. So it's kind of situational, but if you get to pull that off, you're going to be set for the rest of the game. I mean, you can only still attach one energy per turn, and if someone pulls a Marty on you, it's kind of useless, but... Again, it's situational. There's there's good uses for this card, and it's kind of worth just having one of. You don't really need more than that. Another switch. We run four switches. It's a pre-built deck, so... Switches are always good, especially for attacking with your Zashians. Negating that cooldown by switching. Another Metal Saucer. There's four of these. Keep those energies out of your discard pile, and just have your Zashians ready to attack at all times. Another Professor's Research. Okay, Viridian Forest. Now, this is another card that looks good on the surface. Once during your turn, up, you may discard a card from your hand, search your deck for basic energy, and put that in your hand. Now, when this is in play, your opponent can use that too, which kind of helps them. But what this allows you to do is if you have a hand that looks something like this, you know, you have a metal energy, you have a metal saucer. Let's say you have ADP and you're active and you have a Zashian V on your bench. Now, you'd want to get a water energy onto ADP as soon as possible, because that's going to be the harder one to search out, and you need a water energy or an aurora energy to be able to use its GX attack or its ultimate ray attack. So now I could just attach a metal energy, and that's my only attachment for the turn. But, you could use Viridian Forest, discard the metal energy, search your deck for the water energy, and then use Metal Saucer to scoop this up and put them on Zashian. So again, you're kind of accelerating energy and getting more energy attachments per turn, which is kind of hard to pull off, but there are ways to do it. So Radiant Forest is good for that reason. But again, it's at the cost of your opponent being able to use it too. Great Catcher, this one's slowly becoming less useful as more V and V Max cards are taking over the meta. But what you do is you discard two cards from your hand and you're going to switch one of your opponent's benched GX with their active. So this is really good for like sniping out the Dene or just weaker GX Pokemon. Uh, you discard two cards from your hand. And you could pull out one of your opponent's benched GX Pokemon and make that their active. It's like, why would you want to do that? Well, you could pick off weaker threats. You can get a knockout onto Dene. You could maybe get a jump on one of your opponent's Pokemon before they have them set up. So it's kind of useful. I think we only run one of these in this deck. Yeah, just one, which is all you really need. You don't need to run more of one of these. It's kind of situational. It's kind of becoming... Outdated by V and VMAX, but it's still good just to have one of. Another switch. Ordinary Rod. Just kind of energy retrieval. You can shuffle two Pokemon from your discard pile into your deck. Oh, and slash or two basic energy cards from your discard into your deck. So... If your attackers are all in the discard pile, this helps you get them back out, essentially. Another scoop up net. Metal energy. Quick ball. Another Marnie. Another Jirachi. Like I said, there's a lot of multiples of stuff in this deck, just to keep it consistent. 
another energy switch, metal energy. Okay, now this Unbroken Bonds Mewtwo, pretty good card. You're going to want to utilize your scoop up nets here because you can only use this ability when you play it from your hand onto your bench. So it's got like a one use ability. But when you play this card from your hand onto your bench, you may put a supporter card from your discard pile on top of your deck. So, you know, I could use that. And then I could use a scoop up net. And then next turn I could do that again. Or I could do that this turn. And since you're putting that supporter on the top of your deck, do you know who can get cards off the top of your deck? Oranguru. You can get out of like a boss's orders if you need it. You can get out Professor's Research if you need it. There's a lot of utility between these two cards. And it's pretty useful to have them both. But you're limited to the amount of scoop up nets you have with Mewtwo because you're only going to be able to use that ability when you play him from your hand onto your bench. Uh, Galarian Berserker. There's only one of these. You might want to run more. You might want to run none. Kind of depends on what build you're going for here, but its ability, Steely Spirit, your metal Pokemon's attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So, let's say he's on your bench. Zash and V is in your active, and you use ADP's GX move. ADP you're doing an extra 30 damage. So Brave Blade becomes 260. You're doing 260 damage with Brave Blade. If you have a Berserker on your bench, you're now doing 280 damage with a Brave Blade, which is enough to one-hit kill a lot of Pokemon. You know, you can knock out a rival ADP if they have one. And a few GX already, that's like four prize cards. You're already winning half the game just by getting that one knockout. And that's a one-hit kill, so... The extra 20 damage is nice. Not really necessary. But these do stack. So this deck only comes with one. But if you had more of these, you could have, you know, four on your bench, and that's an extra 80 damage. Kind of nuts. Metal Saucer, Professor's Research, uh, Big Charm's pretty useful here. Um, I think my headset just died. <laughs> anyway, Big Charm, when it's attached to a Pokemon, it gets plus 30 HP. Doesn't sound like a lot, but sometimes that's the difference between a one-hit knockout and just barely surviving and denying your opponent any prize cards. So it has its uses. You're usually going to be knowing how much damage your opponent's doing. And with Big Char, you can kind of deny a knockout when you need to. Tag Call, this is what you're going to use to search out Arceus Dalga Palkia GX. You could also search out Guzma and Hala. You could get Malo and Lana with this. It's kind of useful just for searching out your tag team cards, which there's not a lot of in this deck, but it's good to have. Uh, this deck only runs one tag call, which is probably all you need. Maybe another one just to be safe, but for a pre-built deck, that's not bad. Metal Energy. Here's a Galarian Meowth. Uh, he comes with an ability. You can discard two cards from your hand, search your deck for a Galarian Berserker, and put it in your hand. So you can get them set up for evolution right away. But yeah, there's nothing too special about this Meowth. It just helps you get Berserker out a little quicker. Another Oranguru. There's two Oranguru in the stack. Boss's Orders, there's two of. Another Marnie. Another Switch. Another Metal Energy. Another Energy Switch. There's one Aurora Energy. Maybe we went through the whole deck already. But yeah, you kind of get the idea. Yeah, that pretty much wraps it up for the stack unboxing slash reveal um, slash me telling you how to use the deck effectively. Now, yeah, if you wanted to get into the Pokemon trading card game as someone who does battles, I would highly, highly, highly recommend picking one of these up. 
even if you don't like Zashian ADP, even if you think it's overpowered, you don't want to use it, that's fine. But you still have Jirachi, Quick Ball, Scoop Up Nets, Professor's Research. You have all these trainer cards that you can use in every other deck. Like, I don't think there's a deck out there that doesn't run some of these cards. It's very, very useful for building decks. Whatever you want to build. You're going to need some of these cards somewhere. Also, if you can, I'd say pick up two of them right away. Especially if you are interested in using the ADP Zashian combo. You're probably going to want two ADPs and four Zashian. Just to keep things consistent. So, if you get two of these, you got two ADPs, four Zashians, then you're also going to have four bosses orders you're gonna have uh looks like the ending of the video got cut off early but uh i was saying zash and v deck very good very good deck if you're learning how to battle for the first time if you just want something that you could just pick up and do really well with without a lot of modifying or deck building this on its own is excellent very good uh there's a lot of tweaks you could make to make it even better but you're going to do pretty well with this right off the bat. We're going to do a video in the future on how to take this and turn it up a notch. Turn this into one of the best decks in standard format. So don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And stay tuned for more Pokemon content. Don't forget to check us out on twitch.tv slash mountmoongoons. We'll be using this deck and others on the Pokemon trading card game online. And doing some other fun Pokemon related stuff. We do shiny hunting and Pokemon Sword and Shield. And we've also just started playing Pixelmon. Which is a Minecraft mod that adds Pokemon into Minecraft. So yeah, thank you for watching. Have a great day.